My name is Ruth Stafford Peel. Uh, since uh, uh, Norman passed away, I don't use the Mrs. Norman Vincent Peel very much. Now, Buddha, who established Buddhism, he said that mind is everything. We become what we think. And Thomas A. Edison said that, what did he say? <laughs> Thomas A. Edison said the only reason you have the body is to carry the brain around. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> He could inspire the world. She could finish his sentences. Norman Vincent and Ruth Stafford Peel were a team, committed to and dependent on one another, and perfectly matched for a lifetime of positive influence. In my opinion, the greatest ministry of the 20th century was Norman Vincent Peel, and uh, Norman Vincent Peel and Ruth Peel because of the way she helped him make it happen. You know, he came from that school uh, William Jennings Bryan and, you know, the great orators of the early part of the century. The person who has found God and really found him has no great sickness. Booming voices and gesticulations and a crooked finger. My sense is Dr. Peel was the messenger he and he was the one gifted with that ability to communicate. But it was Mrs. Peel who, uh, behind the scenes, uh, strategized how to implement the ideas and how to carry this out into the masses. Mrs. Peel definitely is a maverick among her generation in terms of, you know, setting the standard for what being a successful working mother could mean. Ruth was in practically everything that Dr. Peel did. She was his inspiration. I remember she used to sit in the front row at Marble Collegiate Church, and I knew she was giving him not only prayer assurance, but I'm sure little signals. Ruth Peel maximized Norman's life. I'm a banker by background, and so I have a tendency to try to quantify things. It's almost impossible to quantify this. But I believe with all my heart uh, that she increased his effectiveness four or five times and maybe a lot more than that. Well, my roommate in college was the uh, daughter of the bishop who sent Norman Vincent Peale to Syracuse. Well, one evening she said to me, uh, Ruth, they're going to have a student party down at the uh, Methodist Church tonight. Won't you go with me? At the end of the evening, she said, now I'm going to take you across the room and introduce you to this new pastor. She did. You know what happened? He held my hand a fraction of a second longer than was necessary. And I thought to myself, well, this is going to be interesting. Did the pastor take an immediate interest in the student? <laughs> well, I like to think he did. But, you know, he thought it was very improper to uh, presume to court me. But uh, he sort of found a way around that. Oh, well now how does one court a girl without appearing to court a girl, Dr. Peel? I appointed her chairman of a committee and I had to consult with her. <laughs> <laughs> they were married on June 20th, 1930. A marriage that was a partnership from the very beginning. I just think there is a partnership situation here that can be worked out and it's probably different in every single one. But it has to be worked out. Soon after their marriage, Norman received two job offers. One to a growing and vibrant church in Los Angeles. Another to Marble Collegiate Church in New York City. A congregation that was, at the time, in a bit of a depressed state. And Dad couldn't decide. So she said, well, we're going to sit here and we're going to pray about this. And we're not getting up out of here until we have an answer. They sat all afternoon in their apartment living room until they each felt God led them to a decision. And he said, I think we need to go to New York. I think that's where God's calling me. And she said, I think the same thing. 
And then she said, now you get up right now and you go to the telephone and you call them and tell them you're going to come. So the young couple came to Manhattan and Marble Collegiate Church. But when they arrived in 1932, the congregation had shrunk from over 900 to about 200. The great sanctuary looked empty. It also was the middle of the Depression, and the things were down in every way. But this called forth in the two of them tremendous energy and creativity. For Norman, energy and creativity meant vigorous messages. For Mrs. Peel, it meant organizing and planning, working behind the scenes to magnify her husband's ministry and to further the work of the church. And people began to come. And by the time the Second World War started, the church was filled. In fact, they had to go to two services. Every Sunday was beautiful because it was a new subject every Sunday. Uh, from enthusiasm, attitude, hope, love, envisioning things, tithing, giving back. I learned all those things from Dr. Peel, and it made a difference in my life. Dr. Peel is the author of the number one bestseller in America. His book, The Power of Positive Thinking, has been on the bestseller list for more than two years, and just this week reached a million sales. I think the theory of positive thinking was one of the most powerful ideas to come out of the 20th century. Uh, and it, it, today, it, it, it reverberates still. Dr. Peel's book helped and motivated millions of people, and Norman Vincent Peel became known as the leader of positive thinking and faith-based living. But if not for Ruth, the book, The Power of Positive Thinking, may never have been published at all. It was Ruth who brought the book to the publisher after Norman had given up on it. I read, Mrs. Peel, that when the book was first written, that an editor had asked your husband to make some changes. And you said, no way, Jose. Is that right? <laughs> I'm afraid it was right. <laughs> Well, Dr. Peel, I know that uh, wherever you are, Mrs. Peel isn't very far away. Is that right? That's right, Ed. She's, she and I work very closely together as a team. I'd like for you to come out this way in the living room, and we'll find her out there. This is where we do a great deal of our work, incidentally. Good evening, Mrs. Peel. Good evening, Ed. How so are nice you? Nice to have you here tonight. Thank you very much. Although Ruth was in every sense a working partner with Norman, she always maintained that her first calling was to her family as wife and mother. Norman and Vincent Peel, to make this night complete for you, here is someone who wants to celebrate her 21st birthday with you from Ohio Wesleyan, where she's a senior, your daughter Margaret. Here she is. And from Washington and Lee University in Virginia, here is your son, John Peel. Come on, John. Here he is. <laughs> And from home in New York, your youngest daughter, Elizabeth. Come out here, Elizabeth. Oh, my goodness. Elizabeth, I hear that you went fishing with your, your father uh, last year, and even though he fished right alongside of you, why, you caught all the fish. Now, how do you account for that? Well, I practice positive thinking. <laughs> this is your life, Dr. Norman Vincent Peel. Ruth was responsible for extending Norman's messages far beyond the walls of Marble Collegiate. Early on, she began publishing Norman's sermons. When the request for Dr. Peel's sermons began to top 70,000, the publication committee was forced to move out of the basement of the church. The operation was relocated to Pauling, New York. It wouldn't be long before Norman had another idea for a publication. I often heard Dad say, just as business people get the Kiplinger letter on their desks every Monday morning and it tells them what what the economic news is. We need spiritual news, uh, in, in, inspirational news in, in front of people uh, on a regular basis as well. What began as a four-page newsletter soon became Guideposts, a magazine that today reaches eight million readers every month. Ruth Stafford Peel was chairman of the board for many years and currently is Chairman Emeritus. One of the first things I learned about Mrs. Peel when I started working here uh, was from the editor, the then editor-in-chief, Van Varner, 
who, uh, who after Mrs. Peel addressed the, a group of editors one day, uh, took us aside afterwards and says, said, don't kid yourself, Mrs. Peel reads every single word of this magazine every single month. She would come to my, my uh, senior management meetings <laughs> and, <That's right. laughs> and want to know and, and ask questions of the, uh, of the managers to see what was going on and to see what, uh, what right. some of the new projects were. That's right. They never knew what I was going to do next, no. did they? <laughs> no. What's next for Guidepost today is Positive Thinking Magazine, a new publication that joins Angels on Earth and other magazines designed to reach new audiences with timeless messages of hope and encouragement. We were so excited when we launched uh, Positive Thinking Magazine, and it's, it was really a great first year. It's a magazine for people who really believe, I guess, that their attitude can change the way they live their lives. And new magazines aren't the only things that continue to evolve from the legacy of Norman and Ruth Peel. They're going to rename the prayer ministry to the Ruth Stafford Peel Prayer Power Network. And it's such a fitting tribute to her uh, because prayer has been such a central part of her life. As technology increases and we have new avenues for prayer, we want to take everything that was given to us by uh, Mrs. Peel and just call people to prayer in a greater way. We get in about 40,000 prayer requests each month and we have over 500,000 um, prayer requests each year. The Ruth Stafford Peel Prayer Power Network's goal is to increase the number of prayer requests more than tenfold and to increase the number of volunteers from the 1400 they have today to over 10,000. By the year 2010, the goal is to receive 10 million prayer requests each year. We want to make this ministry a network where people from around the globe can gather in small groups to pray together. To take the work and the ministry and the legacy of two people who dedicated their entire life to doing this kind of work uh, to the, not only the next level, but to do what they always wanted to do is to reach millions with a message of faith, with a positive thinking message, utilizing, always clearly utilizing the power of prayer. So it is now up to us to make this a reality.